Hello and welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming. So today we're going to be taking a look at every relic and I'll be breaking down um, what ones I think are very good, what ones I think are a bit bad, and what situations you want to be using them in. Uh, this video is being made because so many of you requested it um, on our best champions for each region. So I'm not going to be going into um, the relics for every specific champion. I'm just going to be breaking down all the relics and mentioning some champions that they work well with. So just starting off at the top, we have Archangel Staff. Round start, refill your spell mana. So this is essentially the same thing as Sorcery, uh, which is a power you can get in-game. It is very good, especially if you... well, it's very good for some builds. Some guild builds are very focused on um, casting spells every single round. I think this is best on someone like Annie, because Annie, you're generating um, a one mana stun every round, and then you have a lot of other spells in your kit. And then since Annie is level one, or um, one cost, you're able to put her on board, and she's able to get this generating um, every other round um, other than the one you put her down on. So you get a lot of benefit from it. It's very good. The higher cost your champion is, uh, kind of the weaker it is because then you're not getting that effect for as much of the game. Um, it can be good on someone like Lux, but again, she is a bit uh, more expensive, so it's not quite as good. Um, but yeah, for certain people, in my opinion, Annie works out pretty well. Uh, Corrupted Star Fragment. Support, kill my supported ally, grant me its keywords and stats. This one is much more, much more niche. Um, but can be fun in some situations. Um, the two that come to mind mostly is Alawi and Orn. So Alawi, you can um, just eat your tentacle and then use that to destroy the Nexus. One reason you might want to do this is you could put Spell Shield on Alawi, but you can't really do that for the tentacle, at least not reliably. So being able to put all those stats on a safer target um, could be good. Another one is Orn. He summons that ram with his stats and Overwhelm. So then he could eat that, get very large, and um, use that to destroy the Nexus. Um, and it's also grant its uh, keywords and stats, so then you'd be bigger for the next rounds if you need to do it um, again. So very niche, but it can be a fun thing to play around with, especially in some situations. Crown Guard Inheritance, when I level up Rally. Uh, so this is very good for some decks. Again, pretty niche, but with some champions it works very well on. Uh, so Gwen, normally you're able to play her. She levels up on her first attack of when I've dealt 10 damage. So you can consistently get that level up. And normally that's what you want, is you want to have it on a champion where you're able to manage when they level up. So you're you can plan out and get the best from this rally. So like for Gwen, she attacks, she gets a bunch of um, extra attack from Hallowed. Then you rally, she still has all those um, bonus stats because they're just for the round, and then she can attack again and win the game. So it's very good for specific champions. Um, if it's champions where they're leveling up bit more inconsistently, um, or you can't necessarily control it, and you're going to be wasting the effect, then you might want to not use it as much. Alright, Dreadway Chase Gun. When I'm summoned, create two warning shots in hand. The warning shot, zero mana, deal one to the enemy nexus. This is very good for, like, Gnar, being able to get those nexus hits off when you don't normally have any other way to do it. Um, it can also be fun with Annie, if you want to run a build of like Annie with Gale Force, so you're able to recall her and keep playing her, um, do, able to do just a ton of damage to the enemy Nexus. So again, very good, but it's more for um, specific champions. Um, also can work with Jinx, being able to create uh, more cards in hand, so that when you play her, um, she has more things to discard and do more damage, and more things to turn into Pow Pows. Um, so it's it's very good, but it's also very niche in certain situations. Gale Force is 
probably the best relic in the game, probably. Um, it works very well on so many champions. Um, like for Gwen, I prefer Crown Guard Inheritance, but you could also use um, Gale Force. The reason I like Inheritance better is because then you get your whole board to attack, not just Gwen with Gale Force. But so many people, um, Gale Force works very well for. Teemo, it's amazing being able to um, get two attacks in, and then they're recalling him to put him safely back in your hand is actually a benefit. Um, Annie, being able to trigger Dreadway Chase Gun every single round. There's a lot of people that can make use of this in fun and interesting ways. Um, so it's probably one of the best relics and it works very well on a lot of champions. So Green Glade Shade Leaf. Support, grant my supported ally elusive. Now this is grant, not give, so that means it's going to be permanent. Um, this is something that pretty much any champion can make use of, but I would say it's best on someone like Alawi, where Alawi has Overwhelm, and then you can give your Tentacle um, Elusive so no one can block it, hopefully, and then you're able to do a lot of that damage and um, punch through the enemy Nexus. Um, Crown Guard Inheritance is also one that I normally use on Alawi. For Alawi, I normally run Crown Guard and Shade Leaf, and then also uh, Spell Shield, just so that when you play Alawi, you're able to attack twice in a round and just win the game. So that's normally um, what I go with. So it's it has its place. It has some situations where it's um, good, but we haven't really seen any situations where it's amazing. So it's it's very niche, only really good in some limited situations, but it's never great. It's never amazing. It never is really carrying you the game, um, but it has some situations where it works. Guardian's Trinket, add two copies of a random champion to your deck, add a random attachment to it. This one is very much just, you're wanting to have fun, have a very random deck, you wanting to play more of a ARAM sort of style. Um, you can try to run it with Evelyn because her star power scales with champions leveling up. So you can potentially um, use that there, but it's more just of a fun one We want to have a more random game. Um, it's obviously not going to give you that consistency that you normally want from your relics. So it's not necessarily bad because it is adding more champions, they're having um, epic items, so you this really could carry games. You might want to also maybe try this on like Varus, where Varus is kind of a better support champion than actually a champion himself. Um, so it's really one more just to have fun and not one to really build around. Heart of Gold, you earn 50% additional gold during adventures. If you're playing a champion where you don't really put them on board, like for Lux, I normally don't play her. I normally just have her in hand and win the game before I could play her. So this is just going to be a passive effect. You don't actually need the champion on board to gain this effect. Um, so you have a champion you're not really playing, then this is one thing to throw on them. Also, if you're doing more of a Bounty Hunter build, um, which we'll talk on, touch on some of the other items, this can be very helpful um, for that. So, some situations it works well in. Most of the time you're not going to be using it, though. Him of Valor, when I'm summoned, create a redoubled Valor in hand. So, 6 cost, fully heal an ally, then double its power and health. Um, this can be decent for, like... Um, Lux, if you need to have a consistent um, six cost spell, or if you're playing like Varus, you wanted to have that spell doubled up on your Varus and then use him to win games. Um, so another one that's very niche, you're not going to be running this very often, but for some champions it works well. Jarum's Fist, just, it's a stat increase. If you want extra stats, go for it. Uh, this would potentially be good on someone like Yumi, where all that gets carried over is stats and keywords. 
So these ones with different flavor text. Uh, well, these ones would work because they're passive, but some of these other ones wouldn't really be too helpful. Uh, so if you just want to have stat increases, you can go with that. Uh, Lorient Blade Rack. Allies have Challenger. So Challenger is always nice to um, give your allies. This effect, only this and Troll King's Crown. I'll just talk about them both, essentially. They only work while your allies on board. So, in this case, Gwen has to be on board and then everyone has Overwhelm. So, it's not one where you're just giving it to your allies um, without the champion actually being in play. But, giving Overwhelm and Challenger, very nice. Um, just not having to rely on grabbing the power for that. The one situation where these both really shine is with Kaisa. One of Kaisa's um, star powers is that if her allies have three or more keywords, they get 2-2. Two, two. So using this to both trigger your evolve, but also just to spread keywords out to your entire board, so that if you play someone, they'll just get that bonus 3-3 three, three, or 2-2, two, two, whatever it is. That's normally the situation where I think this is best. Um, Luden's Tempest. All of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. So if you're in a spells or skills focused build, like um, Jin, like Annie, can work very well. And then for some other ones like Gwen, her Snip Snip, each one of those does one damage. So by playing Luden's Tempest, you're essentially doubling the damage of that ability. Um, Kaisa is another one where her bolts that she shoots out when she attacks normally do one damage. This increases it to two. So for some specific champions, such as Gwen and Kaisa, uh, it works well for them. And then for other ones like Jin or Annie, they have a lot of spells and skills going off. So just increasing all of that um, by one more is pretty good. Luminous Orb plus three, and I can block units with Elusive. This is more of if you just need the extra stats. So if you're playing someone that is a little squishy, but you'd rather have health than like um, spell shield, you might want to run with this. So I know once with Jax, since he was so squishy, I was using this for a little bit just to give him a bit more health so he could block. Um, and then also if you needed to block elusives, he could. So if you just want your unit to be a bit more tanky, if you need your Tom Kench to be able to take a couple more hits right in the beginning before he really starts scaling. Um, it's really just for that defensiveness. So normally you're not going to be using this. Um, yeah, it's pretty rare that you actually want to use a Luminous Orb. So it's not necessarily bad, it does what it needs to do. Um, but you're just normally going to be offensive, not defensive. Riptide Battery, Plunder, Play, Cannon Barrage um, a number of times equal to my cost. So if uh, we had four cost Gwen and we played her after we damaged the ne Nexus to get Plunder, then it would do Cannon Barrage four times. So deal two to a unit. If it's dead or gone, deal one to the enemy Nexus instead. This one is... It's more of a meme. <laughs> Um, to me, because normally you're not wanting to have to trigger Plunder before you can get this off. And then the ones, most champions that can reliably trigger Plunder, I find are cheaper. Normally for those more expensive champions, they really get the benefit from this. If your units are triggering Plunder, that means they attacked. And that means you're playing your champion after the attack, which means you missed out on that champion attacking. So normally... It feels bad to play. I've run this before on um, some different champions. Normally just felt pretty bad. I tried to make it work. It can be fun, but really it's just too inconsistent. Or you're having to trade your, um, your attack to really get this off. So I think there's going to be some situations where it could work. Um, one thing I would try to do that I didn't try before actually is put this in one of these second spots and in the first spot put Gatebreaker 
see if you're able to just play your champion without plunder, have the gatebreaker go off, and see if this will um, go off with it. Generally, your relics will go off in the order you have them listed. So for like um, Jinx, if you put your gatebreaker down here and your loose cannon payload up here, the loose cannon payload will go off first, level you up, you'll get one more attack, and then the gatebreaker will hit the nexus. So that's just kind of one thing you might want to bear in mind. Alright, back to Stalker's Blade. So when I'm summoned, I strike the strongest enemy. This is amazing for a lot of builds. So ones like um, Garen or also Kane, they level up based on striking. So being able to get their level up to progress from just on play is very, very good. So it is definitely very niche for some specific champions but those champions that can make use of it it is amazing um, another one is orn where he levels up by someone doing eight or more damage so you can play him he'll copy an equipment and then immediately hit someone and level up if you haven't had someone level up yet um, generally this is a worse gate breaker because normally you'd rather hit the nexus but it is still pretty good Star Gem, allied champions have 1-1. One, one. If you're going to be playing more of a support role, this can be very nice. Um, I would probably pair this Star Gem with Guardian's Trinket up here, add two copies of a random champion to your deck, and give them a random epic item. So it's, um, it's fine. It would be probably a fun thing to do when just you're trying to make a interesting build. Is it something you're going to often run? No. Tempest Blade. When I level up, stun all enemies. Now this is obviously Yasuo's blade, and it works well with him. Um, you can use it to reliably clear the entire board with Yasuo. You have him on board, he levels up, he kills everything. Or if he levels up in hand, you play him, stuns everything, and kills it. Pretty awesome, very thematic, fun to use. Um, specifically for Yasuo. There's some other people where this can be fine. Um, Evelyn, getting use of this, pretty good. Um, I like that this is a champion more specific one, but actually helps out other champions as well. Um, the Jinx one really is much more niche. It really only helps Jinx, really. Um, you can try to make it worth work with some other champions like you can maybe try something silly with like Annie, um, but this one actually works and helps a lot more people. The Berserker Buckle. When I survive damage, grant me 2-2. So this is absolutely amazing for like Tom Kench. Um, we don't have too many champions that are very defensive. Um, one thing you could use this on is also Garen. Pretty much anyone that's going to be taking hits every turn this is going to be great for them. Um, I'm actually going to use this for a champion to make a special build on, but I don't want to spoil that um, at the moment. I'm going to try it out, see if it works. But any champion that can take damage consistently, this will be the fastest way to scale up, and it's very, very good. Now, it is very good for specific champions. It's not like you're going to want to put this on everyone, because a lot of champions you don't want them taking hits on. Um, or you're recalling them so you lose those stats, but any champion you consistently gain hit on, this is amazing. So the Bounty Hunter's um, Renown, I have 1-1 one, one for every 200 gold you have. Quite often you have more gold than you know what to do with. Um, I've often been ending games with like a thousand gold because there was nothing worth buying. So this, very good. Um, it can obviously go very well with the Collector, 1-1, one, one, and when you kill an enemy, you earn 50 gold, max of 2 per encounter. So you can pair these together, and then also use the Heart of Gold, you earn 50% additional gold during adventures. You can put all of those together, just try to end up with a crazy beefy champion that is killing enemies every um, battle and getting more and more gold. So they are fun to use. Um, the Collector, when I kill an enemy, you earn 50 gold. 
So you want to be maxing this out. So you need to be on a champion that's going to be getting kills at least two every game. So focus on that. If you have a champion that's not normally getting the kills, then just going with the Bounty Hunter's Renown. If you have a lot of extra gold, that's fine. So the card masters Gambit. 1-1, one, one, and when you win an encounter without taking any Nexus damage, earn one reroll. So this is pretty good if you know you're consistently um, winning games without taking damage. And if you just want a bit of a stat increase, this is good. I also use this um, for more passive builds like Lux, where I normally don't play her, but I'll throw this on her just so that I can keep getting more rerolls. So good on those passive champions, and then um, not one you're going to be putting on most of your champions, but it is decent. The Curator's Gatebreaker. This one, one of the best relics in the game. When I'm summoned, I, su I strike the enemy Nexus. So pairing this with the Stalker's Blade, where when I'm summoned, I strike the strongest enemy. You can put any combination of two of these on Garen and Kane, and then when you put them on board, they'll just immediately hit the Nexus and level up. So um, very strong, also good on Orn. Normally you put this on him, he levels up when you play him and he hits Nexus and wins you the game. Very good also on like Teemo. This counts as his Nexus strike. So he's planting those mushrooms or doubling the mushrooms if he's leveled up. Very good on a lot of champions, good ways to just burst down the enemy Nexus or just level up your champion the moment you play them. So this one you're actually gonna be playing on a lot of champions. The Deceiver's Crest. When I level up, create a copy of my spell in hand. It costs zero this round. This one's much more niche. I've actually never played um, with this on a champion. It's one I always look at and see what I want to do it. Normally that answer is no. I find that generally the Grand General's counter plan is just a better version of this. So round start, create a fleeting copy of me in hand. Um, so the person has to be on board for this to take effect. And essentially what this is going to be doing is creating a fleeting copy of that spell in hand. So this works very well for some specific champions. Um, probably the one that uses the best is Ash, being able to use that Frostbite um, every single round that you have Ash on board. This is always one to look at. Whenever you're playing a champion, look at what champion spell they have. If that's one you want to have in hand every single turn, then the general's counter plan is something you want to use. Um, very good for specific champions. The Grave Digger Spade, round start, draw one and give it fleeting. So I've never found a particular um, use for this. I would say it could potentially be good for like Jinx, but normally there's just, there's always something better to play. So it's not like this is necessarily bad, um, but normally there's a better relic to put on your champion than this. If you've ever found a really good use for this where it's just shined above any other relic, definitely let me know. Um, whenever I see this, I always want to make it work, but I always just find something better to use. All right, next we have the Loose Cannon's Payload. When I'm summoned, discard your hand and create that many Pow Pows in hand. Pow Pows, two mana, deal three to a unit. So this is specifically amazing for Jinx. Um, Jinx, when you discard your hand, she levels up. So essentially, you put this on Jinx, she immediately levels up when you play her. Um, discards a whole hand, does all that damage to the enemy Nexus and board. So normally you play Jinx, she'll wipe the board and kill the Nexus or close to it. And then you just get a bunch of Pow Pows you can use to again just keep the board clear, triggering spells to keep damaging the Nexus. Um, this is part of the re reason why Jinx is so broken. So she's very strong with this. Most other champions don't really find that good of a use for this. Um, you could potentially use this on Annie, because with all of her bonus damage, those Pow Pows would hit crazy hard. Um, but 
most champions have a hard time making use of this other than Jinx. So amazing for Jinx, not really great for most other champions. This Scourge is Stash, Plunder I cost two less. So this is, again, very good, but only for some champions. So you have to be able to reliably uh, trigger that Plunder. And it's four champions you need to get on board as soon as possible. So specifically like Gnar, this is very good on. You have so much, so many ways to damage Nexus and you need to get him on board as soon as possible. So for him, it works um, very well. Other champions, it's, it's okay. But you have to be able to reliably trigger that plunder, and if you're having to trigger that plunder from attacking, then it's probably not worth it because you want the champion to be able to benefit from that attack. Um, so it's something to definitely test out on champions when you're trying to play it. I've tested out on several different ones, and normally I didn't really like how it felt. Or it was too uh, inconsistent to really make it worth it. I'd rather have something that I know is going to work every game. Um, can be really good. I know I played it on Evelyn for a little bit, and when you're able to get her out early and start her scaling with those level ups, it can really swing the game for you, but again, it's often just too inconsistent for most champions to really take effect of. So the Troll King's Crown, um, we kind of talked about this before with the um, Challenger one. Again, just good to give your allies overwhelm. This really just helps because sometimes you have really big units, like Gwen, but then they just get blocked out by low cost or low health enemies, and almost all of your damage is being wasted because it's just killing the enemy, it's not actually going through them to hit the Nexus. So if you have big scaling units um, and you want to end the game faster, it, this often um, is pretty good for you. Turret plating, your Nexus has tough. Um, this would potentially be good for Gnar, where you're often um, damaging your own Nexus with, like, the Tusk Speaker. It can be fine if you think your Nexus needs more survivability. In most cases, though, you're just going to want to be able to destroy the enemy Nexus faster. Voidborn uh, Carapace. When any unit dies, grant me its keywords. Pretty dumb that they let you get more than one of these, but that's the way it is. Um, so this can be good if you are playing like Kai'Sa and you're not being able to get your um, Evolve up by the time she's on board. So normally that would be if you have a um, cheaper unit or uh, one only one uh, star power. So that's kind of what it's made for. I uh, haven't actually tried this on other champions, but... Not really seen other situations where you really need to be getting all the keywords as possible. Yeah, it seems very, very niche, and it could be fun, but it's more of a, a meme. Um, I think this will probably go well with other relics they release down the line. Um, I could see them maybe giving you one that gives you a bonus for each keyword you have, so you'd want to pair that with uh, this. But at the moment, it can be good for Kai'Sa, but it's just a bit more um, meh for most champions. Wriggle's Lantern, round end, grant me impact twice. Um, if I'm in hand, max impact 10. So this is pretty good, or can be good for Orn, where he might be sitting in your hand for a long time. Um, potentially with um, Vi, because you need her to sit in hand while you level her up. So, um, can be good for some champions, but it's a bit trash for most, because normally you're wanting to get them out as soon as possible, and so you're not really going to get the stacks that you need. So it's just a little too slow for the vast majority of champions. Um, Armodillo Shell, plus one and tough, plus one health. So if you need some more survivability on your champion, or if you're playing like early Kai'Sa and you just need an extra keyword, uh, this is when that can be used. It works very well if you have a low level Tom Kench. Um, that one health and tough really helps you survive a lot more and start getting your stacks up for surviving damage. So very good for Tom Kench. 
Um, in general, it's just if you need a little extra stats and keywords. So if you're just starting a champion, it can be fine. But in most cases, if you have a higher level champion, you're never going to play with this. Banshee's Veil, pretty good. If you have a very champ-reliant deck where you need your champion to be safe, um, especially if it's going to be someone that's on board for a while, like if you're playing Yasuo and you want him to just sit on board for the entire game, then you're probably going to want a Banshee's Veil. Um, if you're playing someone like Gwen, where normally you play her on turn and then you win that turn, it's not as needed. Um, if you're playing someone cheap like Teemo with Gale Force, where he constantly is getting recalled, if you're familiar with the fights and what spells the enemy has, then probably don't take it. If you're playing against a new adventure and you're not sure what they can throw at you, you might want to throw it on just to be safe. Everfrost, when I'm summoned, um, stun the strongest enemy. So it can be decent for Yasuo to get those, get a couple more stuns off and have him strike more units. Um, not too, too crazy though. Gunshu's Rage Blade attack grant me 1 1. So, most champions, this is kind of trash because you're not attacking enough to get that stacking up. Um, very good for Vayne, because with Vayne, you're attacking up to three times in a round, so you're actually able to get this um, stacked up and make it worth it. Most champions, though, yeah, you're not attacking enough to really make this worthwhile. Lost chapter, when I'm summoned, you refill your spell mana. Um, very good for a lot of different champions. So obviously there's the spells champions, but there's also champions that make a spell when they're summoned. So like Vayne, she makes her three cost tumble. So if you want to always have the mana to play that, then you can put this on Vayne. You'll play her, she refills the spell mana, gives you that spell, you can play tumble the first round. So it's um, pretty good in very specific situations. Ravenous Hydra, when I'm summoned, deal one to all enemies. So this can be good if you're playing a bit of a slower deck that doesn't have as much removal, and often the enemies are going to be getting uh, more of a full board. You can play this, deal um, some damage to uh, all of them. It is pretty niche though, and normally you're going to have something better to run. So I rarely use this, but it can be good in some limited situations. Soul Sphere, plus one attack and fearsome. So again, with all of these, it's just, do you need the extra keyword? Do you need a little bit more damage? And you have nothing better to play in that slot. So I've used this before in different champions. It's fine. It's never amazing. This is something you're obviously not going to use if you don't have a, uh, or if you have a rare slot. Storm Razor Quick Attack. This is very good if you are having a challenger unit. So if you have challenger, play quick attack. It lets you just constantly clear enemies off the board. Um, can be very good. Can be good with um, Vayne. Normally I don't bother with it on Vayne. I'd rather get the Rage Blade to get stacked up and just pick up a quick attack um, in game from a shop or champion uh, chest. But Vayne is another one that could make uh, use of this. Chameleon's Necklace. Game start. Create two copies of me in your deck. Very good on a lot of champions. So if you have a champion that you need to draw, especially early game, this can be very good. It's putting way more champions in your deck, making you much more likely to draw it. Also, if you have a champion where you want to be using his champion um, spell quite a lot, if you have a champion on board, all these extra copies are essentially just going to be the champion spell. So you can consistently play those each turn if you have a bunch of copies in your deck. Um, so it's very good on a lot of different champions. If you're not struggling with drawing your champion though, then it's essentially useless. So the Grand Duelist Blade, Challenger. This is kind of the opposite of Storm Razor, so if you already have a quick attack, you might want to grab the Challenger, because that combo is very strong in game. Being able to every attack, just choose exactly who you want to attack and kill them. So, um, very good, but 
in very specific situations. Normal units have Challenger instead of Quick Attack, so normally you're going to be going with that instead. Um, but it can be uh, good. Now, most of these ones, though, you're not going to be playing if you actually have a rare slot, because there's just a better option. Um, but if you have a low-level champion, then it can be um, pretty good on them. The Star Child Staff, Game Start Healer Nexus 5. So this can be good if you're playing someone like Teemo, where you might be letting them hit your Nexus more, so that you can recall Teemo and keep playing him. Um, throwing one on Teemo wouldn't be bad, instead of like the uh, Spell Shield. Or if you're playing a passive champion like Lux, where you're normally not putting them on board, so you just want to put relics on them that will happen even if they're not on board. So another good just passive relic. If you're not taking Nexus damage though, then again it's going to be useless to you. So good for some people. Generally you're not going to be touching this. The Troll King's Crusher. So normally it's just a weaker version of the Troll King's Crown. Um, but if you're playing Yumi, then this is actually very good because you want to give that keyword to the unit you're attached to. So normally when I'm playing Yumi, I'm using the Gale Force plush plus uh, this so I can give my unit Scout and um, Overwhelm so I can try to end the game very quickly. True Ice Flail, when I'm summoned to give enemies vulnerable this round. So it's essentially a cheap version or common version of the blade rack where for one round all of your units essentially have challenger because you'll be able to play or challenge any of the units since they all have vulnerable. Normally I'm not running this as a um, common but I could see situations where either with Kane or Garen um, early game if you just have common slot this could be um, decent on them but normally you're not going to be playing with this. So Z Drive Prototype, Adventure Start with 2 plus rerolls. You're going to be using this on champions that really need specific powers to shine. Um, so one with like Lux, you really want to get Slow and Steady and Sorcery. So sometimes uh, you might want to put this on Lux um, so you can get those extra rerolls and try to get those specific powers. Normally I'm not really using this though, but it can work in those situations like I mentioned. Arcane Comet, round start, summon a fleeting falling comet in hand. Six mana, obliterate a unit or landmark. Again, this could be good for Lux. Lux needs to get those six cost spells out. So being able to use this to um, trigger your star powers and your um, champion level up could be decent. Most people, this probably isn't going to be very good. Um, I would say it's probably a fairly, <laughs> a fairly garbage relic for just about anyone other than Lux, in my opinion. The Warhammer, flat stats. If you want a little bit more stats in your person, probably for Yumi, go for it. That's not really much to say there. Um, Golden Spatula, when I'm summoned, grant me 1-1 one, one, and a random keyword for every 30 cards in your starter deck. This is pretty garbage. Um, normally you want to have as few cards in your deck as possible. You want to really refine your deck down, you want to be cutting cards um, at any opportunity. So filling your cards, or your deck with random cards, not really great. Um, also you're only going to get really the first effect from this. This is the 30 cards at maximum. There are ways to increase it, but you'd have to be trying to build your entire deck around this, which would just be awful. So you could use things like counterfeit copies to put more cards in your deck, or if you got the legendary power, it puts 10 copies um, of champions in your deck. There's things that could get this up to the 60, but again, you'd have to be actually trying to do that and just, it's gonna be terrible in pretty much all situations. Don't bother putting this in your deck. Don't try building around it. Your deck will be very inconsistent and you'll just lose the game because you never draw the cards you need. Um, Guardian Angel, start adventure with one plus revive. Again, pretty garbage. You're 
you're not wanting to ever use your revive. You're, you should be able to consistently clear the content. If you're having to count on the revive every time, then you need to readjust your build. Because that shouldn't be the case. So having to lean on having two re revives every game, that's pretty bad. Just putting a good, a good relic will be so much better than having another revive. Guardian Orb, this can be a lot of fun. When I'm summoned, grant epic items to three cards in your deck. Normally you're going to be pairing this with Gale Force and putting that on a cheap champion. So every turn you can just keep recalling and playing them and your whole deck will just get full of epic items. Unfortunately, it's not one I have, but I know um, the general combo for it. Um, so very fun to use, very good on some specific champions, um, normally cheap champions that you can pair with Gale Force. The Succubus's brand, 1-1, one, one, and when you kill a unit, summon a random husk. This is one I definitely want to play around with, but haven't had the opportunity. Um, it's obviously made for um, Evelyn, but I don't think it's actually going to be that, that good for Evelyn. Normally you're not wanting to have too many of your units or husks die with her until you get her to um, over six units killed, because you want to trigger as many level ups with her as possible. So I want to find out who can use this um, the best. Right now I think it's going to be very niche, and it might not even be that good for Evelyn, um, who it's kind of named after. Alright, last, Warmog's Armor. Um, can be good if you're starting off with um, Tom Kench, getting that um, regen. Um, if you have a champion that's going to get pretty big in game, and it's going to sit on the board for a long time, you can potentially use it on them. Um, you can use it on Kai'Sa if you really just need an extra keyword, but most situations, you're not really going to be um, using this. All right, so this was a somewhat brief overview of every relic um, in the game. I tried to touch on what situations you might want to use them in and which ones you don't really want to use very often. Uh, this, again, was made in um, request to a lot of you commented, commenters that asked for this um, video. So just thought I would put that out there. Again, this is all my personal opinion. So if you um, disagree with me, if there's one of the relics that I touched on that is really good in some situation that I didn't mention, definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think of the different relics. All right, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for watching that video. We're putting out daily content for Path of Champions, so if that interests you, please like, subscribe, hit that notif notification bell, and comment down below. We're just starting out here on YouTube, trying to grow the channel, so any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a great day.